In the last couple of videos, we've been looking at consonants and at ways in which we can describe consonants. We've mostly looked at two ways, place of articulation and manner of articulation. A place of articulation is somewhere in your mouth where articulators are in contact. For example, your tongue with your teeth or the tip of your tongue with your alveolar ridge. That is a place of articulation, and it is one way to describe a consonant. A second way is the manner of articulation. This is the way in which the air rushes out of your mouth. And we began to see some manners of articulation, which are represented in the rows of the IPA. We looked at plosive manners of articulation. So for a stop or a plosive consonant, there is a complete blockage of the airflow. If you're going to say a word like pet, you close your lips and then you leave them in a closed position and let air accumulate behind your lips until there's enough of it that when you release your lips, there's going to be a tiny puff of air coming through. Pet. If you have a word like Todd, Todd coming out. This is this also happens for other places of articulation. Ta, ka, ka, and so forth. So we looked at stops. We also looked at fricative consonants. Fricatives have a partial uh, release of air. There's something like your tongue, for example, which is in the way of the airflow and it's cutting through it, causing turbulence. And so um, fricative consonants come out sounding like noise because of the turbulence that your tongue produced. Sometimes it's your tongue and sometimes, for example, it's your lips. This is a sound from Japanese, which is the friction between two lips. Uh, we looked at stops, at fricatives, and at nasals, which are produced by letting some air into your nose. There's something in the back of your mouth called a velum, which can be closed, like in an up position, so that all the air comes into your mouth, or it can be open, so that some of the air comes into your nose. If you pronounce a word like mom, or no, or sing, you're gonna and you put your hands in front of your mouth, you're going to notice that some of the air is rushing through your nose. Please uh, do it along with me. Mom, no, none, sing. Some of the air is coming out from your nose. If you say something like Bob, all of the air is coming through your mouth. None of it is coming through your nose. Bob, no. Those are nasal sounds. Let's look at some other um, manners of articulation. We have trills and taps. So a trill is an articulation such that your tongue or your lips make contact rapidly and several times. So for example, this one is the Spanish sound ra. Ra, where your tongue tuk, 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 touches your alveolar ridge several times. We have this in words like perro, dog, or carro, car. Perro, carro. Your tongue is touching the alveolar ridge repeatedly several times. There's other trills. For example, the, some languages of Papua New Guinea have a bilabial one. Bra, bra. Lips uh, have contact rapidly. There's ra, which is your the back of your uh, tongue having contact with the uvula. So those are trills where there's repeated and quick contact. There's also taps where there's light and very rapid contact just once. So Spanish has an alveolar tap in words like pero and caro and expensive. Pero caro. The tongue touches the alveolar ridge very rapidly and very lightly. Compare the tap and the trill. Pero, perro. Caro, carro. Trills and taps. English 
has an alveolar tap. So if you're from the US, you probably don't say these words with a T in the middle. You probably do not say better and writer. You probably use an alveolar tap, a light touch of the tongue, such, a, such that it sounds better, writer, better, writer. You give it a try. Try to feel how the contact is very light and much lighter than a T. Better, writer. If you're from the US, you probably pronounce the sounds in the middle of these words with an with a tap, with an alveolar tap. The next manner that we're going to look at are approximants and lateral approximants. So in approximants, your tongue approaches the place, but it doesn't quite touch it. For example, the Engl the English R, R is an alveolar approximant. The body of your tongue sort of goes towards the alveolar ridge, then it comes back down. Red, red. It doesn't quite touch it. English has another approximant, the yod in yes, yes. You have your palate and the body of your tongue and it almost makes contact with it, but not quite, yes. Um, these are approximants. You also have lateral approximants, where the body of the tongue goes up, but also sideways. For example, in English, lead, lead. Try to say this very slowly and feel how your tongue is making, is approaching the alveolar ridge, but also twisting towards the right. Oh, lead. That's a lateral approximant again, because the tongue goes front and sideways, lead, so that the air only rushes from one direction, rushes out from one direction. Those are approximants and lateral approximants. Finally, we have lateral fricatives, where your tongue goes sideways and also forces the air out so that it rushes with turbulence, like we did, like we saw with fricatives. For example, this sound, schla, The air escaping through here is a lateral fricative. Many languages have this sound. For example, in Welsh, slash means the other. Slash. In Osa, uh, sihlala. I'm sorry, sihlala means we stay. Sihlala. And Icelandic has them too. In a word like sicht, have sailed. Sicht. So the tongue moves sideways and forces the air through the partial opening so that you get the turbulence in sicht. Lateral fricatives. That's a, quite a few matters of articulation. So the International Phonetic Alphabet has place of articulation, bilabial, alveolar, velar, and manner of articulation. Stops, fricatives, nasals, approximants, and so forth. And these are two important ways in which we are going to describe the vowels. In the next video, we'll look at the third uh, coordinate that we're going to use to describe, sorry, to describe a consonant, to describe a consonant. <laughs> uh, to describe a consonant, we have place of articulation, manner of articulation, and voicing, which is whether your vocal cords are vibrating or not.